Hi everyone and welcome to a new video about BGD amplifiers. This is our example number 6. In this example I would like to discuss the emitter follower circuit using the MPN transistor. Of course we will work out everything in the calculations step by step and verify our calculations using the SPICE simulations. So let's look at our example. We have this circuit here given and we have a couple of values here. We have resistors. We have 5 resistors in total in this circuit. And we have the v, uh, VCC, which is our DC voltage source, and we have the VBE. This circuit is called the emitter follower because the output here, which is connected through the capacitor C2, is connected to the emitter node of the BGT. What we would like to calculate is the following. We would like to calculate the voltage gain, as we did in the previous examples, from the input to the output, so VO or VI, if the beta of the transistor is 100. Then we repeat the process and we make it the beta 200 and also 300 and also compare the results for this change in the beta. And we will compare the, the also other parameters like the voltage gain but also other parameters like the current and also uh, the voltage between the collector and emitter. So let's move on and discuss that in great detail in this example. Of course we will assume that our BGD is operating in the linear region that means the collector current is linearly related to the base current through the beta value here, which is the parameter of the transistor. So the solutions, we start with DC analysis and then we will move on to the AC analysis and from there we will calculate the required voltage gain. For the DC circuit, we assume that our capacitors are perfectly open. So that means the RS and the VI is disconnected and also the load RL is disconnected. So we only have this part of the circuit. You can see that here. So we have the IB, IE, and RIC, and also other parameters given all in capital letters and also capital subscripts. That is the notation for our DC quantities. We have this base node here, which is this B here, and that will be now used, this part of the circuit, using Tevenin's equivalent circuit, will be converted to this circuit. Now we will use this circuit to determine the base current and also the collector current and also the emitter currents to work out the required values for the voltage gain. So the Tevenin equivalent circuit at node B, which is also this node exactly, can be calculated using the Tevenin resistance and also the Tevenin voltage. Tevenin resistance is the resistance looking from the base to the left and you see then the R1 and R2 in parallel since the VCC is then considered to be disabled which is then grounded. So that means our Tevenin is R1 in parallel R2, and if you now use these values, you will get 24 kilo ohms. Now, for the Tevenin voltage, in a similar form, you will look at this node voltage B, and we will now use the voltage divider rule. Then we will have R2 over R1 plus R2 times the VCC, and you will get, when you substitute the values, exactly 9 volts. Now, now we can use these two values in this Kirchhoff voltage low loop here at the input. So we'll apply the Kirchhoff voltage low KVL at the input loop. That means that Tevenin voltage is equal to the voltage across our Tevenin, which is then given here by Ohm's law, plus the voltage VBE, plus the voltage here across our RE. That's this. Again, using Ohm's law. But we know the emitter current is equal to the beta plus one times the base current. So if I now substitute this emitter current in here, and take it together, we have now this complete expression where you see the IB as an unknown only. So we can now collect the terms for the IB and then take them in one parenthesis. And then we can now express an equation for IB here and we can use that. And this is a very important equation that will be used also for the other beta values. Okay. So let's bring them together and we have also the other parameters for the FNN and we will move on first with beta is 100. So when we substitute now the value for beta is 100 in this uh, equation, also the other values we have just determined, we can calculate that this is 36.7 micrograms. Now when we now use the condition for linear region of operation, we do beta times the IB and you get 3.67 milliamps. Now in a similar way we get the IE that will be then 3.71 milliamps. So you can see it's a little bit larger than the collector because the emitter current is always the collector current plus the base current. It's always the case, no matter in what condition you are working for your BGT. Now that we apply now the Kirchhoff voltage law at the output loop, 
just look the check actually our linear region of operation this is just an extra check we see the vcc is equal to the vce this voltage plus the voltage across ra that's shown here now we know everything here so we can express the vce in terms of the other parameters now substitute the values here we have 2000 for the re and we have calculated our emitter current now we will get 7.58 volts and this is definitely larger than the uh, um, vce set of 0.2 so this is definitely also correct for our assumption let's now move on to the ac analysis and then bring this ib here which we will need later in our analysis we start first with our ac circuit this part of the circuit here which is now given in red is the ac model or the small signal model of the bgt you see the r pi here between the base node and the emitter you see also the dependent current source between the collector and the emitter and that value of that is beta times IB. You see all of them are small letters for the currents and also for voltages, etc. The IB is flowing here in this branch and then IC is flowing here. And there will be also an IE flowing here. In this case, also through the, uh, the resistors. Let's look at the base node and also the collector and also the emitter node one by one. Looking at the base node, we assume in the AC analysis that the capacitors are perfectly shorted. And also everything which is not changing with time, like the VCC or any other DC quantities, are also shorted. So this means this part is shorted. That's why you have actually may let me maybe start with a collector. That's why we also have a sh ground here. It is actually the AC ground, which is not physically ground, but it's only in the AC domain. You also see here at base node that R1 is going to the VCC, but it's also going to ground. It's also going from the base node R2 to the ground, physically ground, but these are two now in parallel effectively. That's why we have here R1 in parallel with R2. You also have a short of C1. That means this is shorted. We have an RS and the VI that's also shown here. Effectively, we see also since C2 is shorted, that means the RE and RL are in parallel, and we have the connection for the output node, which is shown here. So that's the complete circuit. Now, looking in here, we can see that there is an impedance, the IB, which is this impedance R pi or the resistance plus the multiplied by beta plus one for this case. So we can say, and also for ZI here, we can say the ZI is now also here. And if we finally develop the ZIB, that's shown here. So it's remember, it is important that you don't say R pi plus RE in parallel with R. L, why? Because this branch here is not the same as this branch. It will be a different branch, which will be also fed by this branch here. That's why you have this beta plus one times as the multiplication factor. ZI itself can be then calculated using the ZIB. But first, let's calculate the R pi. That's using this formula. We have this thermal voltage and also the DC base current. So that's why we need this base current. This base current where we have determined from our DC analysis is the connection actually to the AC analysis here. So we know, or we can assume at, let's say a room temperature, approximately 300 Kelvin, a little bit hot uh, room, 27 degrees, but it's 26 uh, millivolts. And it is now also the DC current here. We can, for the base current, we can calculate that it will be then 708 ohms. Now we can substitute in here, we have now everything and also the parallel combination of the RE and RL is 1500. So let's substitute that and we get this equation and then we have this value. You see it is 125.2 kilo ohms. Okay, now we can calculate the ZI because now it is a parallel combination of three resistors, R1, R2 and the ZIB. But we know the ZIB, we also know the R1, R2 already, so we can also write it like this. It will be like this and when you do the math here, will be straightforward will be 25 20 point seven kilo ohms so that is the resistance or impedance looking at the base node here okay we would like to calculate the voltage gain v over vi but we can split the problem as vb over vi which is then this node over the voltage with this node times the voltage at this node vo over the voltage at node b that is easier than the direct calculation of the vo over vi let me show you why, because it is easy to see that first uh, step by step. VB over VI is just the, uh, the, the voltage division here, because you do VB over VI is actually the impedance looking here, ZI, 
over RS plus ZI. That's just the attenuation factor sum number here. Then we can move on and then say, what is VB? Now, VB is actually this voltage across R pi and the voltage across the parallel combination of RE and RL. That's shown here. But there is, of course, a different current here because this is IB and this is IE. Well, we can replace the IE later. And we know that VO is VO, which is then this voltage, is also IE times the parallel combination of the RE and RL. So we have already the values for the second fraction. So this is then the, these are the two values. And we know that IE is the beta plus one times IB also in the AC domain. So collect them together. We have this and you see this will be then the numerator. This will be the denominator. And since IE is equal to beta plus one times IB as said before, we can make this here. Now, moving on, we can now say this part of the equation will be then put here in the second fraction or second ratio. And this will be then here in the first ratio. So we will get actually the following. And when you divide out the IBs, you get actually this expression. Now we get for the voltage gain by multiplying the two parts, you have this expression. Now this is now pretty easy to see which part is now determining the voltage gain, the attenuation and the part of the transistor. Okay, now we have now the values, zi and also other values for the beta, etc. So you just substitute everything what we have calculated and also given. And we get now here 0 0.972. What you see is that this is a non-inverting, so it is a positive sign. And it's also less than 1. It's actually between 1 and 0. It is not a circuit to amplify. It's actually a circuit to make the input impedance large. That is actually its uh, objective and also the output impedance small because we want to, for example, in this case, then specifically amplify the voltage. And for voltage, we ideally want to have an input impedance which is infinite and an output impedance which is zero. That's why we like to have this circuit. Okay. Let's look at our simulation results, specifically for the DC analysis. These are the quantities, and let's check that. This is the circuit. Now, specifically again for the beta S100, you see all the values, and it's actually the exact same circuit. You can see the 36.8 microamps, so close to what we have calculated. Also, the collector current, emitter current, and also the collector emitter voltage are also very close to what we have calculated. There are small errors just due to the parameters we haven't uh, taken into account for the BGT. Okay, let's now move on and also look at the transit response, which is then the gain, because we know the gain was 0.972, the blue line is our input, which is 10 millivolts peak, that means 20 millivolts peak peak. So it is a pure sine wave with a frequency of 10 kilohertz. You see the red line here, the letter curve, it is in phase, so it is not inverted, and it has a peak peak value of 19.396 milliamps. So we look at the maximum and the minimum value. We just do the max minus the minimum, as shown here. Now we just calculate that using basic formula, output peak peak value divided by the input. You will get 0 0.970, very close to what we have calculated actually from simulation and also from the calculation. So we can say this is a very nice result. Now moving on to the DC analysis now for the beta S100. Now this can be of course speed up because this equation will be then used again, but then only changes the beta. Everything is exact same. Let's do that and then substitute the values. You get now 19.5 microamps. Going to the collector will be then this and for the emitter current will be this. So we see the changes now. The emitter current has changed a lot, but the collector and the emitter were current is not changed that much. Again, for the check that the linear region is really valid, we look at the VCE and we substitute now the new values for the emitter current and we get 7.16 volts still larger than the VCE of 0.2 volts. That's a sort of the check you need to make. You need to make this larger than 200 millivolts in order to assume your assumption is valid for linear region. Okay, now take this beta for this 200 and now go to the AC analysis. Again, the same circuit. Again, this part of the model, this is ZIB, this is ZI. We develop again this one. Again, we calculate the R-pi, but this R-pi will be now different because IB, the B base current, the DC base current has changed. So it'll be larger. So we need to use the value and also the same parallel combination of the RE and RL. So let's lose that and then calculate that. So you see it has increased almost by a factor of two. And now we use R1, R2, and also the ZIB again as a parallel combination, the same 
actually procedure now it's also increased to 22.2 kilo ohms it was before 20.7 kilo ohms again a voltage gain we split the problem in two we do the voltage division we calculate the separate parts for the vb and vo we take them together we, we use the quantity that ie is equal to the beta plus one times ib we make this we divide out the ibs and we have this now we collect the terms here and here in this equation then we get the following now when you substitute now the new values because r pi has changed and also the zi has changed in a beta so three changes actually here you get now a new value which is now the voltage gain of 0 0.974 it's not that much change of course when you go from 100 to 200 because this was 0 0.972 in the first case now it is 0 0.974 no not that much a change compared to the change here because 100 percent change here in the beta Okay, let's go to the simulation results for the easy analysis. This is the circuit. Again, now the beta is 200. You can see the base current, collector current, emitter current, and also the collector emitter voltage are very close to what we have calculated. So this is a nice confirmation. Moving on to the transfer response. This is the gain, what we had. And this is, again, the blue line, which is our input. And the red line is output. Again, in phase, we have, again, our input is the same. So it is 10 millivolts peak, 10 kilohertz frequency, 20 millivolts peak peak. Now we can again use the maximum and the minimum value of this wave at the output to calculate the peak-peak value and also do the peak-peak output voltage divided by the peak-peak input voltage will get 0.972. Very close to what we have now calculated also a very nice check here. So Let's now go to the final one which is the beta is 300. Now again the same thing, we use this formula, now the beta is 300, again the base current has changed, then also the uh, collector current can be calculated using the beta 300 now that will be then this one so it was before in the 200 was 3.90 so it's not that much change and emitter current also change uh, calculated using the beta plus one times the base current here and that was then this okay again we make a check for the output vce to in order to check that the linear region is valid this is the same formula for the output loop we can now set up the vce now use the new value for the emitter current and we just got 7.02 volts again larger than much much larger than 200 millivolts so definitely in the linear region of operation so we can say this assumption is valid we move on on the ac analysis and we keep that base current dc this is the circuit we know that this is the part of the uh, bgt for modeling this part is the impedance looking in the part here in the base and from here actually in the zi and we can now again set up the equations, find new R pi. There's the 1961 uh, because the base current has again decreased. And also find the value of the parallel combination of the RE and RL in the AC circuit here. And we just substitute the values here. And again, you see that it has increased. So it will be now 453.5 kilo ohms. Again, the parallel combination of three resistors will be then ZI. Do the math here again in a similar form as the two uh, values for the beta you get now 22.8 kilo ohms. so also a little bit more increase in the zi again the voltage gain we uh, split the problem again in two parts so vb over vi and on v over v vb over vi is again that voltage division just the voltage divider and we also have an expression for v and vo using the small signal model now take them together and make the fraction for the second part here. We know that the emitter current can be used because it is base current times the beta plus one. Let's make that. So we change this in here and you see the by B, I, B, I, B. You divide it out, you get this expression. Now this expression is now the second part here in this equation. The first part is this. So if you now multiply these two with this expression, now the only changes here are the zi, or pi and the beta. Now with the new changes, new values, you get now a 0 0.974. That's the new gain we have calculated. Okay, now let's bring now the simulation results also for the beta 300 for the DC analysis. This is now the values we have calculated. And this is the circuit for beta 300. You see they are very close to what we have calculated. This is almost 7 volts for the VCE. We have 7.02 volts, so it's a very small error there. Okay. Looking at the transfer response, we had a calculation for the gain of 0 0.974. The blue line is again the input voltage and red is the output voltage. Again, in phase, you see the 10 millivolts peak and 10 kilohertz as a frequency and peak peak is 20 millivolts. 
You see from the output voltage, we can calculate the peak peak value by looking at the max and minimum. Doing again the same procedure, we get the output peak peak divided by the input peak peak, you get 0.972 as the gain. And we had 0.974 as the gain. So that's our, again, very nice result. So let's now summarize the calculations so far, because we have three uh, beta values, beta is 100, 200, and 300. You see the base current ha has changed a lot, it was drastically decreasing. The collector is also decreasing or increasing actually, I must say, but it is not increasing that much as the base current change. So this change here is not that much as the change in the beta, uh, I mean in the IB. There's also a change in the IE, there's also a change in the VCE, but the change here and change here and the change here are very small compared to the change in the beta. That's actually what we call the base stable design. What you also see is the AV here, which is the voltage gain, that is almost constant. So it is 0.972 for the beta is 100, the other one is 0.974, and again 0.974. Maybe this is of course not exactly this, so maybe you have, you have a 2 here or the 1 there, depending on of course the values. But rounding off, this is very close to the values shown here. Okay, now summary of the result for the DC analysis, this is what we had for beta is 100. We had this for the 200 and now this is for the 300. Again, you see in one picture the evaluation of the currents and voltages. Let's all look at the simulation result, but the specific for transient. This is now for the beta is 100, 200, and also the 300. Again, the evaluation of the plots here. And now we have calculated, of course, this but from the simulation. We got 0 0.970, 0 0.972, and 0 0.972. So you can see that here the values are really confirming what we have seen here. That's actually a really nice result. All right, guys, this is our example number six about the emitter follower circuit using the MPN BGD. We have discussed the voltage gain and variations due to the beta variations, and we have also discussed how we can work it out from DC analysis and also the AC analysis that required voltage gain for this circuit. If you have any questions, comments about this example, please take me and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. In the next videos, we will consider other circuit types like the common base amplifier and also do that in a similar form for the MOSFET circuits. So stay tuned and if you have any questions about also other examples, just let me know. Take care.